Hello there. Good evening, everybody. Hello, good evening. Hey there. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Welcome. Nice. Welcome, guys. Very nice to have you here. So lovely. Perfect. All righty. So be more than welcome to today's class. If, as always, a pleasure to me to be here. And well, let's just get started then. So let's see. Before we actually start, let me see. Let's take the attendance. So first things first. So here we go. Just give me a second. All right. So today is the third Wednesday. All righty then. So here we go. Okay, so I'm going to start taking the attendance. As always, remember, try to turn on your camera. And so here we go. So we have Alison Gabriela Ramos. Not here, I guess. So we continue with, let me see, Ana Beatriz Pineda. Ana Beatriz, you there? Not there, okay. So then we continue with, let me see. Eh, Ángel Balmore Aguilar. Uh, present. Hey, Angel. Welcome. Nice to have you here. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice. All right. Nice, Angel. So then we have next person, Brenda Raquel Reyes. Brenda Raquel Reyes. Not here. All right, so we continue then with Glenda Maricela Cuella. Glenda Maricela, one. Glenda Maricela, two. Not here yet. So we continue with Iris Beatriz Cornejo. Good evening, present teacher. Hello, good evening. Thank you very much, Iris. Nice. So we continue with Josué Vladimir Alvarenga. Present teacher. Thank you very much, Josue. Nice. So then we continue with Carla Maria Beatriz Arana. Present teacher. Thank you very much, Carla Maria. Nice. Then we continue with uh, Carla Yesenia Lanza. Present teacher. Thank you very much, Carlita. Nice. Then we go, let me see, we continue with Lucy Natalie Juarez. Here, teacher. Thank you very much, Lucy. Nice. Glad you're here. So we continue then with Marilyn Del Carmen Solis. Present, teacher. Thank you very much, Marilyn. Nice. So next person, we have Mauricio Emilio Alvarenga. Thank you very much, Mauricio. Good. I'm glad that you are in the chat now. So perfect. All right. So next person, we have Obed Alexander Alas. Here, teacher. Thank you very much, Obed. Welcome. Nice. Then we have. Thank you. Anytime. Then we have Orfa Lisette Barrera. Orfa, Lisette, are you there? Not there. All right, so I guess not there. So we continue then with Rosa Vilma Landa Verde. Present teacher. All right, thank you very much, Vilma. Nice that you're here too. So let's see, we continue with Sonia Evelyn Iraeta. Well, she asked for permission, so I guess she's not gonna be here today. So we continue with uh, Teresa Guadalupe Bonilla. Present. Thank you very much. Nice, Teresa, thank you. All right, so we continue then with Jessica Melissa Oya. Present teacher. Thank you very much, Meli, nice. 
Next person, eh, last but not least, Julissa Raquel Cruz. Present. Thank you very much, Julie. Nice that you are here. Okay. And that's pretty much it. Okay. All righty then. So after taking attendance, let's see. Let's get down to business. Let's check. Well, let's review some of the things that we were studying yesterday. If you remember, we started talking a little bit about the simple present and how we use the simple present to talk about uh, daily routines at work. That was one of the last things that we were doing yesterday. So today, before we continue with that, we're going to have a little review on uh, some vocabulary related to jobs and professions. So let's see if you can recognize some jobs and professions here. So let's see, let's make, mm -hmm. let's play in two groups. So, all right, wait, give me a second, because I guess I forgot to do something. Indeed, I forgot. Just give me a second. And here we go. Okay, so as I was telling you, we're going to play in two different groups and we are going to, we're going to try to guess here is something related to um, the jobs and professions uh, that we are, well, we're going to have to discover, right? Um, what are we going to do? We're going to see here some responsibilities or some activities that these people do. And we're going to try to guess the uh, profession that these people have. So let me see. Let me share my screen so that we can see it. So here we go. All right. Mm. Wait, give me a second, because I guess I'm going to need more questions here. Oh no, that's the tops. Okay, anyway. Okay, so here we go then. We're going to work in two groups. So group number one is going to be Angel, Iris, Marilyn, Mauricio, Ober, Teresa, and Julie. So you are group number one. Group number two, I have eh, Josue, Carlita, Lanza, Carla Maria, Lucy, eh, Vilma, and Jesse. So you're going to be eh, group number two, all right? So let's see. Now we're going to take turns to go over this game here. All right, so I guess you remember this game. And in this game, eh, well, we are supposed to um, flip the cards, right? So that we can know or so that we know what's behind each of them. So let's see, me ven. I'm sorry, me escuchan, me ven, see? Hello? Yes, teacher. Oh, I'm yes, sorry. Yes, okay. Yes. Nice, nice. Yes, yes. Se me trabó la pantalla y no sabía si me veían o si ya había empezado el monólogo. All right, nice. So very good. Okay, so here we go. We're going to start then with group number one. So let's start with Angel. Angel, so choose a number from one to 16, Angel. Angel? Hi, hi. Hey, Angel. Choose a number from one to 16. Choose one. Uh, seven. Number seven, lucky number. Let's see, Angel, number seven. Hmm, so can you read it? Angel, what does it say?
¿Qué dice ahí la oración? Angel, can you help me? Reading. Uh, I don't. Uh, try, try to read it. Intente leerla. Don't worry. She encourages. Encourages. Uh -huh. Learn uh -huh. among, among a group of, of students. Uh -huh. She is. Uh -huh. So what's the profession? What do you think is the profession? She is among, among a group. Uh -huh. I'm sorry? Of a student. Uh -huh. What do you think is the profession then? What's the job? What's the profession? She's a teacher. She's a teacher. Let's see. Uh, would that be? Let's check. And yes, indeed. Very good, Angel. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So yes, she is a teacher, right? A teacher encourages, encourages, motiva, right? So encourages learning among a group of students. Very good. Thank you very much. So points for group number one. Excellent. So let's see. Group number two. Let's start with Josh Josue. Hi, teacher. <clears throat> hey there. Let's see, Josue. Choose a number from the ones that are left. Number one. Number one. Let's see. The one and only for Josh. She takes care. Well, can you read it, please? I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's see, Josh. I can read it. She, yes. Uh -huh. She takes care of the house and family. She is. Uh -huh. Hmm, she takes care of the house and family. What's the profession? What do you think, Josh? No, no, no sé qué quiere decir la oración, teacher. No, no. Ella, hay... ella cuida. She takes care of the house and family. Hmm, what do you think is the profession? No idea? I don't know, teacher. No? <laughs> All right. Someone from group number two. Grupo número dos. Es ama de casa. Housewife. Uh -huh. Ah, housewife. 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 Mm, será, será. Let's see. And Josué, agree? De acuerdo con la... Con lo que dicen los compañeros. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Se va a arriesgar, dice. Let's see. So, a homemaker. Oh, homemaker. In this case, pretty much, homemaker is maybe a term that we don't use that much. I would say that you were right. The term we used or that you used is actually more accurate and more popular than that. So, a housewife housewife. Eh, este, esta palabra homemaker no es muy usada realmente. Eh, yo me quedaría más con el término que ustedes utilizaron, que es housewife. Para los que nunca habían escuchado la palabra, es housewife, right? Housewife y ama de casa, right? It's a person who takes care of everything at home. Y, um, That's pretty much it, right? They do a lot of things. Hacen mucho y a veces no les pagan muy bien. Nah, just kidding. All right. Ah. <laughs> Al estilo de Will Salgado, right? <laughs> Indeed. All right, but there you go. So, yes, I'll give you the points for that one. So, very good. Excellent. All right, so we go back to group number one. Group number one, let me see. Um, let's see who's the following. It is Hi, 
nine. Number nine says Iris. Let's see. Number nine. Aha. Uh -huh. Can you read it, Iris? Huh? Can you read it? The senior. Uh, can you read it? The sentence? She designs. Diseñadora. The senior. Pero, yeah. <laughs> ¿Puede leer una oración? Yes, please. Okay. She's the thing called clothes. No. Clothes. Clothes. Uh -huh. Clothes. Uh -huh. uh, she's a seer. She is a designer. Designer, right? Designer. Very good. So let's see. Yes, excellent. A designer or a fashion designer. So this verb here designs, right? Designs. Letter G doesn't sound here. Aquí no, no suena la letra G. So no va a sonar designs, right? She designs clothes. Clothes. Igual la S en, en, este, en este caso no suena, right? Lo dejamos en close, close, right? Excellent. Very good. Iris, and get some clicks. Good. So let me see. Group number two. We continue with um, Carlita Lanza. Five. Number five says Carlita. Let's see. Ay, 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 here we go, here we go. <laughs> so, swap points. So that means we are going to change the scores. So, good for team number two, so good for team number one. <laughs> All right, nice, Carlita. So let's see, we continue then with group number one. We go back with you. So let's see, Marilyn. Um, let's number see. 11. Uh -huh. 11. Number 11 for Marilyn. Let's see. Oh my God. Here we go. Empieza la, la toxicidad. <laughs> so, team number one takes 25 points from team number two on payback all right jesus christ so well there you go thank you marilyn so <laughs> let's see team number two we continue with carla maria what a pressure <laughs> indeed <laughs> okay. number 10 number 10 for carla maria let's see aha what do you think? Can you read it, Carla Maria? Her job is to dance. Uh -huh. She is a dancer. A dancer? Would it be? A Let's dancer. see. I would be surprised if it, this is not a dancer. Yes, very good. <laughs> so her job is to dance. So definitely a dancer. Excellent. Very good. So there you go. So let's see, we continue then with group number one. So next person, Ovid. I chose 13. All right, number 13, the lucky number for Ovid. Let's see. Aha, uh -huh. can you read it first, Ovid? He works in a restaurant. There's so many. <laughs> he is chef. A chef? So, mm -hmm. uh -huh. Any other so, possibilities? How, how do you say mesero? It, it's very similar to wait. Waiter or wait? Waiter. Uh -huh. Waiter? Waiter. Can we waiter. have... He's two a waiter. Uh -huh. Well, in this case, it's a he, right? So if it's a man, it's a waiter. 
And if it's a lady, then it's a waitress, right? But you say then a chef or a waiter. Those are the options, right? Okay. Okay, let's see. And the answer is a chef. So yes, it was mentioned by Ovid. So yeah, I'm gonna give you the points for this one. So nice. Thank you. Excellent, very good. All righty, so then we continue with group number two. And then we have Lucy. Hello. Hello. Number there. six. Number six. Let's see. Oh my God. Lucy is a magnet for bonuses and traps sometimes. So let's see. <laughs> <laughs> ah, there you go. So can you read it first, Lucy? He studies a lot. He is a student. He's a student. All right. Let's see if that's the answer. Yes. Wonderful. He studies a lot. So he is a student. Lovely. Thank you very much, Lucy. So let's see. Then we continue with, well, we go back to group number one. So Teresa, you choose a number. Number three. Number three. Let's see number three. And what about this one? He, he, well, can you read it first? Teresa, Teresa. Uh -huh. um, Can you read it? Daisy. Uh -huh. no, no lo puede leer, Teresa. He is to be. He is. He designs buildings. He is. What do you think? Any ideas? Idea. No, no idea. <laughs> no, yeah. Need some help from the team? Uh -huh. Let's see. What? Can you do? Architect or civil engineer. An architect or a civil engineer. Hmm, let's see. Do you think, do you agree with those options, Teresa? Do you think it could be an architect or a civil engineer? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> so let's see. And yes, in this case, an architect. Very good. So it could have been both, right? An architect or a civil engineer. Both could have been acceptable. So very good. Nice. So there you go. So let's see. We go back to group number. Let me see. Group number two. So we have Vilma. Hey, teacher. Okay. Hey, hello. Number four. Number four for Vilma. Oh my God. <laughs> the only Sorry. No, de hecho, no se va. Oh, sí. El de 25. <laughs> No se la comió usted el tiburón. Se comió el otro equipo. Le mordió un pedacito el otro equipo. Sí. All right, so there you go. Nice. Thank you very much. So, well, scores are changing a little bit. So let's see. We continue then with, let me see, Julie. Hi. Hello there. Two. Number two for Julie. Let's see. Aha. What can you read it first, Julie? She writes computer programs. She uh -huh. is. Uh -huh. She writes computer programs. She is. What do you think? 
Ingeniero en informática. <laughs> Perfect Spanish. <laughs> so, uh, systems engineer, maybe? Sí. Yes. Hmm, systems yes. engineer. Uh, let's see if that's the answer. Hmm, a computer programmer. Hmm, a computer programmer. These guys are like 100% dedicated to actually probably create apps and software, but also systems engineers, they also write computer programs. So I would say that we can accept it. So I would say that it's okay, all right? So nice, it can be a computer programmer or a systems engineer. So I would say both, they have that responsibility. So very good, Julie, nice. All right, good. So let's see, group number two, Meli. Number 16. Number 16, let's see, 16 for Meli. Ha, huh. can you read it first, Meli? Compete in compete. Such as running. Uh -huh. Jumping and throwing. He is a, an athlete. An athlete? An athlete? Uh -huh, I guess. All right, let's see. Sounds that it could be something related to sports. So let's see. Yes, very good. He's an athlete. Excellent. So he competes in sports such as running, jumping, and throwing. So he is an athlete. Very good. Excellent, Meli. Nice. So let's see. We go back to group number one, second round. Angel. Number 14. Number 14 for Angel. Let's see. Oh my God, Angel. So you swap points again. So we change the scores one more time. Jesus Christ. So, ay, ay, ay. <laughs> All right. So let's see. We go back to group number two, second round. E Josue. Oh, eight. <laughs> number eight. Let's see. Ah, can you read it? Uh, George, can you read it first? He acts in the movie. Mm -hmm. He is. Uh -huh. Act. Uh -huh. What's the profession? He is act. He is Sorry, act. act. Ah, an actor? Yes. Let's see if it's an actor or, well, let's see. Yes, very good, right? So this person acts in movies or series. So this person is an actor. Remember that if it was for a girl, it, this would be actress, right? Actor for boys, actress for girls. Very good, Josh, nice. Excellent. So let's see, team number one. Team number one, we go for the second round, Iris. Mm, 25. Ah, 25. 25. Ay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Celine. Ah, okay, okay. 15, let's see, 15. Let's see. What do you think, Iris? Can you read it? I fix this car in my chair. Uh -huh. It's a... Uh... Mechanic. Mechanic. He fixes cars and machines. He's a mechanic. Let's see. Yes, very good. So he is a mechanic. Excellent. Very good. Iris. And we have the last one for, let me see, Carlita Lanza. Carlita, for you, number 12. <laughs> Can you read it, Carlita? 
He helps people be healthy. No sé cómo se dice. Healthy. Uh, he healthy. Healthy. He is a doctor. He is a nurse. All right. So he's a doctor or a nurse. Let's see. Yes. In this case, he is a doctor. Very good, Carlita. So let's see. Five scores. We have, let's see, winners, team number two. So I clap for you. Very good. Excellent. So nice. Now, there you go. Well, there you have just some vocabulary, right? Related to different jobs, different professions, and well, nothing extraordinary, right? But something or some professions that we need to keep in mind. Very good. Okay, then. now speaking about jobs and professions, we have been uh, talking a little bit about daily routines at work. Whenever we talk about daily routines, uh, we cannot help talking about the simple present. Yesterday, we, were, uh, we went over some of the rules uh, related to these tense here. And even though I know that they are very simple, we're just going to have a quick review on some of these rules that we have for the simple present. So let's see. Now, the main characteristic or like the main use that we give to the simple present uh, if you remember, that will be uh, to use it for uh, or to talk about daily routines or habits, things that we do on a regular basis, things that we do, uh, if not every day, at least uh, with some regularity, right? So we say, well, here we have some examples of things that we do uh, or that we could do, right? on a regular basis. So we have, I play soccer. The school opens every morning at seven. He always forgets her bag. Every 12 months, the earth circles the sun. The class starts at eight, right? Those are things that happen on a regular basis. So, we're just going to focus on this. So we are not going to check number one and number two, not yet. Well, number two and number three, I'm sorry. We're not going to focus on that yet. So with this, uh, we're going to make a little stop, right? The simple present with some expressions of time. Here we have frequency adverbs. If you remember, uh, we use frequency adverbs just to express how often we complete or we do an action. For example, here we have always, often, usually, sometimes, rarely, never, and every day. Now, from we if said some time ago that never, for example, expresses zero percent, then it goes up right so it goes on scaling a little bit like for example rarely we say it's like maybe 10 20 percent then we have sometimes which is 50 percent then we have usually which is 60 70 probably often 80 percent and then always 100 percent right uh, we might have some more examples of frequency adverbs that are actually located right in between some of these uh, adverbs that we have already here. So besides this, we also have this expression below, every day. Every day is very similar to uh, what we know as always, right? If we do something every day, that means that we do that always. Now, we are going to talk about expressions of time in a minute. In terms of the rules, eh, one of the most important rules, if you remember, when talking about the simple present, is a third person singular rule. That means that if I am using he, 
she or it, then uh, the rule says that my verb is going to add an S or ES, depending on the ending of such verb. If, and this is what happens most of the time, uh, the verb is not a special case, we are just going to add the S. This happens only with he, she, it. No more than that. These are my special cases, right? If these verbs that I'm using or the verbs that I want to use end in some of these endings, right? Like O, double S, S, H, C, H, or X, then we're going to add E, S, not just the S. So for example, I say, I go, she goes. I kiss, she kisses, right? En todos estos ejemplos acá, no le puedo solo agregar la S. Imagínense en este eh, verbo que ya tiene doble S, kiss, y yo vengo yo de campeón y le agrego una tercer S. No, ¿verdad? Me voy a desinflar antes de terminar la palabra. No puede ser ahí, she kiss. Uh -uh. Para evitar eso, agregamos una ES. So, todos estos verbos en estas terminaciones van a agregar ES, regla de oro, right? I, well, she goes, she kisses, she watches, she washes, and in this case, she fixes, right? Here, this is like if we are adding an extra syllable for some of them. So there you go. All right, then we have some other rules that we might take into consideration. Uh, we have there a consonant followed by Y. Y changes into a, E, a, well, I, E, and we add S. This only happens if the cons, I mean, the letter Y is preceded by a consonant. Si el verbo termina en Y, pero antes de esa Y tengo una consonante, voy a cambiar esa Y por I latina y le voy a agregar ES, right? So ya no va a ser I study, sino he or she studies. Now, Si es una vocal, lo que tengo antes de la Y, como el caso de play, ahí no, ¿verdad? Ahí no le voy a cambiar nada. Lo dejo tal cual. I play, she plays. Just the S. That's it. And then we have, a, along with these rules, as we were mentioning yesterday, we also have the use of auxiliaries. Auxiliaries do and does. When am I going to use auxiliaries? When I'm talking about negative statements and questions. Either or, in both cases, I'm going to use auxiliaries. If I'm asking a question, a auxiliary goes at the beginning if it's not a WH question. And if I'm using a negative statement, I use do and does plus not. So that is, I don't or she doesn't, right? Plus the verb in uh, the complement for that sentence. So very important. When do I use do and when do I use does? Does is only used with the third person singular, just with he, she, it. And then with the rest of pronouns, then I can use do. With I, with you, with they, with we, so I use do. Any questions so far? Preguntas hasta aquí. Clear as crystal. All right. So no questions then. So I can continue. And well, this is something we already started. I'm not gonna stop here. And this is just how 
uh, these sentences or some of these examples are going to look like, right? In the affirmative, negative, and interrogative form. Disclaimer, hago la aclaración. La forma interrogativa que vemos acá eh, son preguntas de sí o no. Right? It's a yes, no question. En las que no estamos utilizando WH words. Si estuviéramos utilizando las WH questions, ahí sí, eh, esto iría al inicio, ¿no? La WH word va al inicio. Eh, y luego le sigue el auxiliar. What do you do, for example? Where does he live? So, in those cases, the auxiliary do or does, it goes uh, after the WH word. All right, we're going to see some examples on WH questions later on. Now, this is just a reminder so that we have a clear idea on how to use simple present statements for describing daily routines at work. Now, speaking of daily routines, I have a little exercise for you, which is somehow a, a listening, right? And this is about this a very important guy, I would say, who is a Elon Musk, right? If you're not familiar with Elon Musk, well, this guy is pretty much, yeah, he's like a businessman. He's also an, in, an inventor. Um, he's a lot of stuff besides being a crazy person as well. So we're going to listen to Elon Musk's daily routine. So what are you going to do? We are going to check uh, during the video three stages in his daily routine. His, uh, they're going to talk about his morning, midday, and evening. So you're going to try to take notes of some of the activities that he does in the morning, at midday, and in the afternoon. Ustedes van a tratar de anotar algunas de las actividades que él realiza en la mañana, al mediodía, y por la noche. So, let's see. Let's see how many you can write, all right, that you can write down. So here we go. Let's watch the video. And then you tell me how many activities did you get. So here we go. And listen. He's the real life Iron Man, the mind behind Tesla, SpaceX, the boring company, PayPal, and more. He's known to work 20 hours a day, 120 hours a week, and has admitted to sleeping on the conference room table at Tesla just so he can squeeze in a little more work time. This man is Elon Musk. He's worth $170.3 billion at the time of writing this video, and he's been quite vocal about his daily routine. Time to take notes. We've got the breakdown for you right here from what his mornings look like, to his work day, to even his hobbies. Hey, start implementing some of Elon's methods and you may find you're on the path to becoming one of the richest. Let's start right at the beginning of the day. For Elon Musk, that starts at 7 a.m. Musk makes sure that he will get six to six and a half hours of sleep each night. Through a bit of trial and error, he found that this is the perfect amount of sleep for him, and he prioritizes it. He was quoted in a Reddit AMA as saying, sleep is really great. I find if I don't get enough sleep, I'm quite grumpy. I could drop below a certain threshold of sleep. Although I would be awake more hours, I would get less done because my mental acuity would be affected. After he's up and moving, Musk usually skips his breakfast. He finds that this will save him a bit of time in the morning, but this is not always the case. When he does eat, he makes sure it's a high protein meal, like an omelet, and he'll have it with a cup of coffee. After that, Elon will take part in what he considers his most important daily routine, a shower. You heard that right. One of the richest men on the planet's secret daily routine is to hop in the shower. He claims that while he's hosing off, that's when some of his best ideas come to him. And believe it or not, there's some science to back this 
this up. Shelley H. Carson, a researcher and psychologist at Harvard University and author of Your Creative Brain, a book all about unlocking your imagination and productivity, has stated taking a bit of time off from a problem is the best way for your brain to find the solution to it. She goes on to say that by focusing on whatever problem is in front of you for too long, you may develop inherent biases, and that will keep you thinking in the same unproductive manner. But doing a simple task like taking a shower and lathering up your hair can spark new parts of the brain, and this in turn can jumpstart some free association in your mind. Before you know it, you'll be more innovative, more productive, and more creative than before when you were a stinky, sweaty mess. And to think, Elon figured this one out on his own. What a guy. Another morning routine for Mr. Musk that is a bit more on the rarer side, but does indeed happen, is physical fitness. Although we do want to point out that when he appeared on Joe Rogan podcast, he confessed to Rogan, I wouldn't exercise at all if I could. Sounds like he's not much of a fan. But he does indeed get out and about. Musk will lift weights, run, and has been known to take part in Taekwondo, Karate, Judo, and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Apparently, he likes to dance too, as evidenced by some of his, uh, shall we say, unique dance moves that he has displayed at a Tesla event. Closing out his morning, Elon will see his kids off to school and then drive over to either Tesla or SpaceX, usually in his Tesla Model X, a $79,990 $90 car. Moving on to the midday of this billionaire, we find that he splits his time fairly evenly between his two largest companies, SpaceX and Tesla, with Tesla winning out ever so slightly in terms of weekly hours. For Musk, 42 hours of his week are spent at Tesla, and 40 are at SpaceX. And when he's at work, oh boy, you can bet he's giving it his full focus. Musk has stated he's not as good about his nutrition as he should be, and many times he will scarf down his lunch during an afternoon meeting. Speaking of meetings, Musk hates them. And honestly, we don't blame him. He has his time at work perfectly scheduled out, and meetings? They just get in the way of all the good stuff, like the engineering of his cars, making sure that they look and feel perfect, and also making sure his factories are running as efficiently as possible. Musk hates meetings so much that he has even sent out a list of rules about them to his workers. Large meetings are banned unless they are absolutely necessary. Frequent meetings are a no-no as well, and are only allowed if a matter is urgent. Any and everyone is allowed to walk out of a meeting at any time as soon as they realize they aren't needed. Musk doesn't want anyone to waste their time due to formalities. Finally, there is a ban on acronyms or nonsense words for objects, software, or processes at Tesla. The idea here is that anyone should be able to talk to anyone else in any department, and information shouldn't be stopped just because one department uses jargon that another isn't familiar with. In total, Musk has claimed he works 120-hour work weeks, but boy does it pay off. On average, per day, Elon will make $383 million. Uh, we're starting to feel like we aren't working hard enough. How about you? We feel like we have to say this, though. Elon knows he works a bit much. He has gone on record to say, There were times when I didn't leave the factory for three or four days. Days when I didn't go outside. This has really come at the expense of seeing my kids and seeing friends. He's eased up recently, and it's more common for him to do 80 to 90 hour work weeks. But he also said this reduction is temporary. Here's what the end of the day itinerary is for Elon. He'll drive on home to his $50,000 boxable casita home. It's a 400 square foot prefabricated and foldable home, which can be pulled by a Tesla Model X luxury SUV. He confirmed this in a tweet. He said, my primary home is literally a $50,000 house in Boca Chica Starbase that I rent from SpaceX. Once home, he'll be sure to eat a huge dinner. Not necessarily the best way to calorie up, but for Elon, it works. Many times, business dinners are his main source of food. Some of his favorite delicacies, French food and barbecue, and Diet Coke. He'll also sip on a whiskey or some wine every now and again. His time at home is also spent with girlfriend Grimes, worth $3 million, and their child. Elon will also watch some of his favorite TV shows, like Silicon Valley and Black Mirror, but he also has stated he loves anime, specifically Death Note. He's an avid gamer, with Cyberpunk 2077, a game that brought in $563 million in total sales revenue being one of his favorites. But he has also tweeted that one and only one console game has stolen his heart, 
and it was Halo. Other than that, Elon will be sure to read, there are claims that he will finish two books a day, listen to podcasts and audiobooks, and throw the occasional party. We're not sure how big a party he'll manage in his 400 square foot home, but we don't think that will stop him. He once rented a castle in England where the guests played hide and seek. If that's not a way to spend your 30th birthday, we don't know what is. It's lights out at 1 a.m. for Mr. Musk, and then he does it all again the next day. Inspired yet? Gonna try to up your productivity to match Mr. Musk? Well, hold on a second. No need to try and push yourself to be just like Elon. This dude is really one in a million. There are claims that his IQ is as high as 155. To put that in perspective for you, the average person typically will have an IQ of 100, and in the United States, the average is 98. Only a very small percentage of people have an IQ of 130 or higher. So, Elon? Yeah, the man is smart. Like, super smart. But get this, Musk has stated on Joe Rogan's podcast he doesn't believe people would like to be in his shoes, and that's exhausting. But again, he's worth $170.3 billion at the time of writing this. We think it's worth it. Before we go, we want to leave you with a routine of another billionaire that will leave you scratching your head. Ingvar Kamprad, the former CEO of IKEA, who passed away in 2018, was worth 42.5 billion bucks. Okay, we're just, we're just Elon Musk, all right? So, okay, there you go. So, let's see. The listening or the video was about Elon Musk, right? Um, now, let me see. Wait, I can find it here. All right, then. So what are some of the activities that this guy does in the morning, according to the video? What do you think? What are some of them? Volunteer. He gets breakfast. He? He gets breakfast. Ah, he eats breakfast every day? Or in not every the, day? In the morning. In the morning, aha. Uh -huh. So he eats breakfast in the morning. They mention that how often does he takes or how often does he eat breakfast? Someone who listened to that? Sometimes he skips breakfast. Very good, excellent. There you go, Lucy. Here, there was a little disclaimer in which he says, sometimes he skips breakfast, right? What does it mean to skip breakfast? Saltarse el desayuno, right? So he doesn't eat anything sometimes. Sometimes when he eats, he says that he likes to eat is something very rich in protein. It's very good. What else does he do in the morning? Something else? He hmm? takes a shower. He takes a shower. Very good, Angel. So, yes, he takes a shower. Nice. They mentioned something about he taking a shower. Let's see. Over. He, uh, he, he say the sh in, in the shower. Uh -huh. Ahí sí no entendí mucho la parte <laughs> que él dijo, de que habló sobre la psicología de la, de la ducha, la otra, uh -huh. la otra señora. Uh -huh. <laughs> Pero ahí me, ahí medio me perdí, creo que algo del, del masaje en la cabeza o algo así. ¿no? <laughs> ok. So something like that. It was a little bit uh, related to it. They said that he hops in the shower. So, el da brinquitos en el en la ducha, right? Uh, como para, como para que distraerse y al mismo tiempo reenfocarse en sus pensamientos, no en los problemas que tiene que resolver. So they were saying okay. that, yeah, that's actually a, like a technique to be able to find solutions to different problems. So very good, nice, excellent. Uh, any other activity that he does in the morning? I listen and sometimes uh, I like it, the dance uh -huh. room. 
in karate. Ah, so he practices. practices. Uh -huh. he so taekwondo and jiu-jitsu. Exactly. So martial arts or some sports, right? He does some physical activities. Very good. Excellent. Something else, people? What about midday? What does he do? He sees his kids. After school. Ah, he sees his kids after school. Okay, very good. Nice. He said that he doesn't, sometimes he doesn't have time to spend with his family, but sometimes he, he takes that time to see his kids, right? Very good. What else? He drives his Tesla for work. Exactly. He drives his Tesla car for work. Very good. Nice. What else? Something else? No more activities for this one? They didn't say much about the midday, I guess. So what about the evening? What are some activities that he does in, in the evening? Like to watch it serious. Uh -huh. and he is the gamer. Exactly. He likes to watch series and he's a gamer. Very good. So he plays video games too. Nice. Excellent. Do you remember what series or shows he likes to watch? He likes Death to Note. watch Death Note. Dead note, very good. Yes, so he likes anime, right? Interesting, very good. All right, any other activity? He sleeps at six or seven p.m. He goes. Uh -huh. So he goes to sleep at six or seven p.m. Yeah, whenever he gets to sleep, right? Because he was mentioning that sometimes he just falls asleep in the conference room, right? So he's working, so he just takes a little nap or a short nap, and then boom, get, uh, he gets to work again. But good, nice. What else? Any other activity? What about food? Does he eat? Business dinner sometimes. Ah, very good. Exactly. So he has some business uh, dinners, right? So what does he eat? Do you remember what he eats in those dinners? Someone who remembers? No, no idea. Me, uh, eating meat and diet coke. Diet coke, very good. And sometimes meat, uh huh, or French food, right? French food, uh, sometimes whiskey, uh, wine, etc., etc. Very good. All right. So nice. That was that was really good. You actually got most of the ideas here in the video. Now, if you notice. If I left the subtitles right on in the video. Probablemente, bueno, Elon Musk es una persona un tanto conocida, especialmente eh, recientemente, ¿no? Sin embargo, tal vez algunos de, nos, de, 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 de nosotros no están tan familiar, familiarizados con él. Traten de hacer estos ejercicios cuando tengan tiempo, ¿no? cuando estén solitos. Y son videos que nos sacan de la zona de confort. A veces sí nos gusta ver videos, ¿no? nos gusta ver videos en inglés, qué, qué canciones, y pedazos de nuestras películas favoritas. Pero el vocabulario que no conocemos muchas veces se esconde en las cosas que usualmente no veríamos. ¿no? 
Y eso puede ser un video de noticias, por ejemplo. A mí no me gusta mucho ver noticias, pero y de pronto verlas en inglés me puede servir de práctica, por ejemplo. Y no solo un video de noticias, un video de alguna personalidad importante, y etcétera, etcétera, ¿no? Y de acá podemos sacar un montón de vocabulario. Si yo pongo los subtítulos en inglés, puedo estar, híjole, me puedo dar gusto anotando palabras, palabras, palabras que yo no sé. Y tampoco solo es anotar, anotar las palabras, ¿verdad? También es eh, buscar la palabra, cómo se pronuncia, cómo se escribe, eh, qué significa, cómo la puedo usar en una oración. Es trabajo, o sea, toma tiempo, pero me ayuda a construir mi vocabulario. So, cuando tengan la oportunidad, cuando tengan chance, go and try to practice this way. It's a good way to eh, acquire vocabulary. All right? Good. Okay, then. Now, it's nine, so I'm going to take attendance for the second time. Then I'm, eh, we're going to move to a different activity. So, let me see. Ta -da -da. All right, here we go. So we start with Alison Gabriela Ramos, not here. So then we continue with Ana Beatriz Pineda. Ana Beatriz, Anita, not here. So we continue with Ángel Balmore Aguilar. I hear teacher. All right, thank you very much, Angel. Next, Brenda Raquel Reyes. Brenda, not here. Okay, so we continue with Glenda Maricela Cuellar. Present teacher. Thank you very much, Glenda, nice. So then we have next person. Um, Iris Beatriz Cornejo. Present teacher. Thank you very much. Iris, nice. Next, Josué Vladimir Alvarenga. Present teacher. Thank you very much. Y Josh, next person, Carla María y Beatriz Arana de Vargas. Present teacher. <laughs> Thank you very much, Carla María. Nice. Then we have next person, Carla Yesenia Lanza. Present. Thank you very much, Carlita. Next, Lucy Natalie Juarez. Here, teacher. Thank you very much, Lucy. Next person, Marilyn del Carmen Solís. Present. Thank you very much, Marilyn. Nice. Next person, we have Mauricio Emilio Alvarenga. Uy, cuidado ahí con los carros. Let's see. Next person, Obed Alexander Alas. Here. Thank you very much, Obed. Nice. Then we have Orfa Lisset Barrera. Present teacher. Hey, nice. Nice that you're here, Orfa. Nice. Uh, glad to see you. <laughs> nice. All right. So then we have, let's see, Rosa Vilma Landa Verde. Present teacher. Thank you very much, Vilma. Next person, Sonia Evelyn Iraeta. Well, she asked for permission. Then we have Teresa Guadalupe Bonilla. Present. Thank you very much, e, Teresa. Next, Jessica Melissa Oya. Uh, Thank you very much, Meli. And next person, Julissa Raquel Cruz. Present teacher. All right. Thank you very much, Julie. All right. Now, now that we are, well, getting more and more familiar with these uh, routines that we um, have at work, let me show you something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm that we can use for that. Let me share my screen here. So if you have your books or your manuals with you, 
you can check page 13. On page 13 in the book, you're going to find something related to time expressions. Time expressions for regular activities. So if you remember um, some minutes ago, we were talking a little bit about frequency adverbs. Frequency adverbs, they help us to express how often we perform an activity. Besides frequency adverbs, we also have some other time expressions that can help us, uh, well, to complete a, or to get the same, let me see, the same uh, result like the ones that we have here. Here we have some examples on different time expressions. Every day, every week, every month, every year. So I can add every to whatever of these words to talk about. Well, if we combine it with every day, todos los días, right? Every week, cada semana every month, y cada mes, cada año, right? We can also translate that as uh, pretty much todas las semanas, todos los meses, o todos los años. So it could be. So that is uh, how we use the word every. Then we have daily. Daily means something that you do every day so i take a shower at 8 a.m daily that means every day weekly same thing here but that means every week right so not missing any week that means that we do that uh, weekly on a weekly basis we can combine that sometimes and we can even create some uh, compound nouns like a weekly, weekly meeting. So, aparte de significar que algo sucede todas las semanas, también puedo ocupar esta palabra y para formar um, estructuras un poco diferentes, como a que me suene como, a, como un adjetivo, como en este caso, una reunión semanal a weekly meeting, right? So I can also combine that with words, with certain words to express that an event occurs on a specific period of time. Same happens with, in this case, monthly. Same idea. A, something that happens every month. Si se fijan, y por ahí estas palabras se derivan de Por ejemplo, la palabra day, week y month. Day no exactamente escrito así, y, pero más o menos de ahí viene la palabra. ¿Qué es lo que agrego? L, Y. La L, la Y, usualmente, no todo el tiempo, en inglés me sirve para formar adverbios. Los adverbios, como en este caso, eh, pueden tener diferentes funciones, como acá. Me sirven para eh, hablar de tiempo, right? Weekly, monthly, daily. So there you go. Besides that, we also have some other expressions that maybe are familiar for you, like once, twice, or thrice. Si se acuerdan, en el módulo anterior también vimos once, twice, or thrice, a, y aquí le podemos cambiar day, month, well, vamos en orden, week, month, year. So, if you remember once, one time, twice, two times, thrice, three times. Ya de thrice en adelante, acuérdense, ya no decimos thrice, no da, decimos four times, five times, etcétera, etcétera. Four times, five times, 
and then we continue. Y eso lo podemos también combinar con algunos, y con estas expresiones de tiempo, como, por ejemplo, si yo digo, I visit my dentist, eh, let's say, once a month, once a month. Es mentira, ¿verdad? pero bueno. So, I wish, que sea. I visit my dentist once a month. Yo visito mi dentista una vez al mes, right? Mm, I can also use here, uh, she has vacations, let's say, twice a year. She has vacations twice a year. Tres veces al año, right? Twice a year. So, this is how we use these different time expressions with some activities, right? With activities that, uh, well, we do, in this case, since we're talking about routines on a regular basis. What are you going to do now with this? Now that we are a little bit familiar with these expressions, I'm going to raise this. Uh, here we have. Um, oh, before uh, we move on, we use these time expressions to talk about daily activities and schedule events. What are schedule events? Uh, eventos programados, right? Like events that we have on a calendar, like some meetings, como el ejemplo de las meetings, las reuniones que le di, weekly meeting, right? Son eventos que están programados a realizarse en cierto periodo de tiempo. Yeah, so then we use these time expressions. Now, here we have, right below the exercise, we have this table here in which it says, the exercise says, Write five questions you can ask a classmate about a regular day at his or her job. Use the questions to interview a classmate about his or her daily activities and the time for each. So, en esta tablita que está acá, vamos a escribir, bueno, o en su cuaderno, en este caso, van a escribir cinco preguntas eh, que le puedan preguntar a su compañero o compañera que tenga que ver con su rutina de trabajo. So, esas preguntas ustedes las van a formular y se las van a hacer a la persona, ¿no? Pueden trabajar en las preguntas juntos y luego contestarse, y, bueno, esas preguntas cada quien con su información, ¿no? Y acá ten tenemos el modelo de cómo hacer la pregunta. What does... He or she does, right? What does she does? If, for example, at 10 a.m. at work. So it could be, or what does he do in the morning at work, etc., etc. No solo pueden seguir este patrón de pregunta. No. Pueden hacer otras, eh, las que como ustedes las... las eh, lo estimen conveniente, ¿no? Para dar una, un pequeño vistazo a algunas otras preguntas que ustedes pueden hacer, pueden ir a la página. Where is it? ¿Qué se me hizo? Pueden revisar la página. ¿Dónde está? Ah, página. 12, right? En la página 12 también tienen algunos ejemplos. Eh, the yes, no questions podrían ser, aunque y lo ideal sería que ocuparan WH questions o information questions. All right. Remember, the questions must be related to uh, the person's daily routine at work. La rutina diaria en su trabajo. O sea, que va a preguntar sobre actividades que hace esta persona en su trabajo. So let's see. How are we going to work with this? We're going to work. Let's see. In pairs. So let's see. All right. So we're going to work in pairs. So we're going to work. Y Carlita Lanza with Jesse. 
uh, I'm sorry, with, with yeah, uh, with Meli, right? So you're working together, Carlita and Meli. Number two, Angel and Iris, they're working together. Number three, uh, Josue and Nobel, you're working together. Then we have number four, Orfa and Julie, you're working together as well. Number five, Lucy and Vilma, you're working together. Then we have uh, Mauricio and Teresa, you're working together. And then Glenda and Carla Maria, okay? So you're working together as well. All right, let's see. So remember, um, here you have, so you're going to do five questions, okay? Five questions with your answers and your classmate uh, answers as well. So here we go. I'm going to open the breakout rooms so that you can start working on it. And once you finish, we come back to the main session and then we share the answers that we got, okay? So let's see how you do it. You can start working now. If someone has problems, then you just let me know. Nice.
All right, so welcome back. Let's see. Let's wait for the rest. Okay, here they are coming. Right, and I guess they're going to come whether they like it or not. No, here's everybody now. <laughs> okay, let's see. I hope I didn't interrupt. I hope that you actually uh, could finish well these five questions. So let's see. Let's see. All right. So, do I have volunteers to share those questions and answers? Any volunteers? No hay voluntarios. Vaya. Let's see. <laughs> Lo vamos a seleccionar entonces democráticamente. A ver. <laughs> so let's start. No, vamos a ir en orden. A ver. Carlita Lanza en Meli. Porque me escucha. <ríe> ¿Por qué, Dios? ¿Por qué? <ríe> a ver, a ver. Sí. <ríe> All right. So, don't worry. Whatever you have. Let's see how you, how you did. Let's see your questions. Okay. Uh, Meli. Ajá. Meli. Se fue Meli. Vaya. Se nos Las, fue. Ah, perdón, estaba en mute. <ríe> no, ahí está, ya me diciendo que se había ido. De los nervios, de los nervios y el mute había quitado. <ríe> sí, nosotros no hemos terminado, pero bueno. Ah. <ríe> Don't worry. Let's see, let's see. Ok. Eh, Meli, what time do you usually get up the work? I usually every day I start to work at 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. Is your job close or far? My work is close to my house. What do you do in your work? In the morning, I, che I check the inventory every day in the morning. What do you after lunch? I always process invoices. What time do you usually leave home? I usually leave at home at 5 p.m. Great. <laughs> Bye. All right. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> All right, very good. So you got, well, really nice questions. So excellent. I just have my doubts with the last one. Así era como tenía la última. What time do you usually leave home? Leave, sí. sí. What time do you usually leave home? Ah, okay. So leave en la mañana, me imagino. Oh, en la tarde. Yo pensaba que era que me iba. Que me iba. Ajá, ajá. Ajá, la tarde. Ah, que iba a su casa. Ay, ajá. Ah, pues, esa era la duda. Pues sí. So, what time do you usually? Le vamos a cambiar el leave por arrive home. ¿A qué horas right. llegas a casa? Ajá. En la mañana, cuando nos vamos al trabajo, por ejemplo, ahí sí es. Uh, sería what time do you usually leave home? ¿A qué horas sales de tu casa? Pero en este caso es llegar a la casa. Okay. Excellent. All right. So nice, very good. Interesting question. So good. Let's Thank see. You. All right, nice. So let's continue with Angel and Iris. Hi, Angel. Hi. Hi. All right, let's see. Mm. 
Ajá. Iris, do you hear us? Inicia Ángel en la conversación. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you do in your goat? Um, I am a supervisor in the small supermarket. Uh -huh. Iris? Ahora continúa Ángel con la pregunta que me pregunta que qué hago en las mañanas. It's your turn then, Angel. Uh, where does where does you in the morning? In the morning, I check the cell phone if notification in the of any information have been and broke the private solution too. Nice. Some other questions? Uh, What is, is the profession, Angel? My profession. Mm -hmm. I am a manager of the organizer. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, what do you do in the morning, Angel? Uh, I prepare a gold plane. What do you prepare? Cornflakes. Gold plane. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, Any other question? What do you do? Uh, okay, it is. Come on. Yeah. What kind of report? Ah, uh, what type of reports? Uh. At court, at court. Reports at court. Again? At court. What, how do you spell that? At, uh -huh. Like this? At court, yes. At work, uh -huh. okay. Court. All right, so something here about some of your questions. In the first ones, remember, we have a, what do you do at work? What do you do at work, All right? And number two, what do you do in the morning? What do you do in the morning? What's your profession that was good? And here, probably what types of reports, what type of reports maybe um, do you complete, right? Or do you, I don't know, what type of reports do you complete probably? Or do you fill out? That could be. All right, so very good. Thank you very much to all the two of you. Nice.
So let's see. Then we continue with, let me see. Mm -hmm. Wait, got lost. Here we go. So next in line, we have Josue and Ovel. Hey, teacher. All right, hello. I am ready, Jose. Yes, yes, Ovel. Okay. Hi, Jose. Hi, Ovel. How do you do? How do you start the morning at your work? In the morning, I check my email. I prepare report. And you, Abel? Ah, I'm meeting with my partner for planning today and perform box counting. Excellent. What do you do in the build day, Abel? Uh, I I take my lunch and drink many water and prepare coffee for afternoon. And you? What are your activities uh, for the midday? I take a break. After lunch, I mail calls. And you? Oh, well. For afternoon? I go to gym and receive English class online. Your activity of afternoon? Oh, in the afternoon, I clean decks. I go in a home. It's a wonderful. It's finished, Thank teacher. You. All right, there you go, nice, excellent. <laughs> so, good, good questions. How do you start the morning at your work? Good. Uh, what do you do at midday, right? Uh, in English, we sometimes use specific prepositions for different parts of the day, like in the morning, at noon, or at midday, in the evening, at night, etc., etc. Usualmente jugamos entre el in y el at con los diferentes eh, tiempos del día, right? Y cuando hablamos del mediodía, siempre decimos at, at midday o at noon, ¿verdad? And also, eh, drink many water, no. De hecho, mañana vamos a hablar un poquito de many much. Eh, water no es contable. Entonces, many solo no funciona con cosas que son contables. En vez de decir, tal vez, bueno, lo que queríamos decir creo que es mucha agua, ¿verdad? Entonces, eh, ¿qué digo? Drink a lot of water. A lot of water. Es mucha agua. Tomo mucha agua. Nice. We're very good. Excellent. So, nice. We continue then with, let me see. Next in line, we have Orfa and Yuli. Hi, Orfa. Hi, Julie. All right. What is your What is your job? I am administrative assistant. What do you do daily at work? I check production. I call the client. Of client. Clients, yes. Uh huh. I check the email. I do cats register. I have a weekly meeting. I take inventory per month. What is your job, Orfa? I am an account accountant. What do you do weekly? I Register the sales of company. I do you tax declaration. I prepare a financial statement. 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 Statements. Statements. Yes. Um, nice to meet. Nice to meet you too, Orfa. 
All right, there you go. So good, good questions. Eh, when we say what's your job, y nosotros en español como si preguntamos, ¿no? ¿Y ¿cuál es tu trabajo o de qué trabajas? Right, so it's what's your job. En inglés, eso se, eh, se cambia por la expresión what do you do. Ajá, what do you do es como el, lo más parecido que tenemos a él, a qué te dedicas o de qué trabajas, ¿no? Sin embargo, pudiéramos utilizar un poco eh, de la estructura que ustedes usaron, como el what is your job, agregándole el about. What is your job about? Como de, de qué se trata tu trabajo, tu, como de qué se trata lo, tu profesión o lo que tú haces. Podría ser, ¿no? Podría ser una manera. Y agregándole el about al final. Oh, okay. Yes. Y, y nice question. What do you do daily at work? Wonderful question. Me ocuparon ahí la, la, la expresión de tiempo. So nice. Very good. And then we have this word register, right? Register. Y I register tal cosa, right? Etc. Etc. So good. Very good. Thank you very much, uh, Julie and Orpha. Nice. Excellent. Let's see. Next one, we have Lucy and Vilma. Yes, Vilma. Okay. Vilma, what do you do on mornings at 7 a.m.? She goes for work. Okay. And what do you do, Vilma, on 10 a.m. every day? Um, she types reports and sends email. Okay. And Vilma, do you have lunch at 12.30? Yes, she does uh, take lunch at City, ah no, excuse me, 12, 12, 50, every day. Okay, and what do you do, Vilma, at 3 p.m.? Uh, take a coffee. Okay, and what do you do at 6 p.m.? Um, Go, uh, boy, no sé cómo digo. Pues. I go, uh -huh. I go, I go for home. I go. Um, okay, for home and uh, next, uh, cook dinners. Okay, thank you, Vilma. Okay, Lucy. All right, there you go. <laughs> nice, very good. Couple of things. Y same thing about prepositions, right? Remember, we use specific prepositions for specific parts of the day. For example, in the morning, on the morning, no, in the mornings, right? What do you do at 10 a.m. in the morning, for example? Y then we have, por ahí las respuestas, y Vilma me la estaba diciendo como de, como si estuviera hablando de otra persona, como de ella va a trabajar a tal hora. <ríe> so she goes to work, eh, como si me está contando de alguien, ¿no? Entonces, ¿qué tenía que hacer ahí? Eh, ocupar el yoga. I go to work at 10 a.m., etcétera, etcétera, y para responder la pregunta. Por ejemplo, por ahí le preguntaba, me acuerdo cómo fue, pero usted me dijo, yes, she does. Right? La respuesta está bien, pero. Es como si la estuviera haciendo para otra persona, ¿no? Y entonces diríamos, yes, I do, ¿verdad? ¿no? Porque eh, eh, a mí me, me están preguntando, ¿no? So there you go. Y take coffee, maybe not. Drink coffee, ¿verdad? Right? We drink coffee. Y that's, that would be the right expression. So, nice. Igual, acuérdense siempre con el tiempo, las horas, y bueno, decir la hora siempre o una hora específica siempre va con at, right? What do you do at 10 a.m., at 7, at 8, etc., etc. But nice, very good. Nice questions, though. So, good. So, let's see. Next, we have Mauricio and Teresa. Hola, hola. 
Hola. Hola. Hola. Hola. Hola. Hola. Hola. Hola. Hola. Hola. Hola. Hola. Hola. Hola. Hola. Hola. Hola. Hola. Hola. Hola. Hola. Hola. Hola. Hola. Hola. Hola. Hola. Hola. Hola. Hola. The the first job. How many cakes do you make a day? Um, you solitaire on the three of this the day. Do you in the last night? Do you the second you make? I check my Gmail at 8 a.m. Um, usual every 20 minutes. What time do you make coffee? Uh, it was a please a a a a in a. Uh, what time do uh, you have a lunch? Uh, 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 sorry, uh, seven, seven, uh, seven, eight, or uh, they were beef. Okay, he usually has lunch uh, at yeah. 11 a.m. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is that it? Okay. All right, there you go. So good. So I don't know. It, this question was nice. What time do you start work? So we go with that one. En la segunda, no sé si yo escuché mal, no sé si me perdí, que preguntaban, how many cakes do you bake a day? Something like that. No, no era eso. Yeah. Uh, how many cakes do you make? Ah, ok, nice. Hey. Ah, pues sí, 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 teníamos la idea. Nice, very good. So, en este caso, y se acuerdan que ayer creo que veíamos lo del bake y el cook, la expresión sería como hornear pasteles, ¿no? Bake a cake. So, how many cakes oh, yeah. do you bake per day? Este per que ven acá es eh, literal, ¿no? Por día. So, per day, per week, per month, también son expresiones que podemos ocupar y las tomamos así, ¿no? Textualmente, por día, por mes, por semana. Eh, lo ocupamos así. So, se puede. Then, per day, per day. Solo, o siempre ocuparíamos la misma ex expresión per, y solo le vamos cambiando día, mes, año, etcétera, etcétera. It's very good. Ajá, uh -huh, exactly. Y la última, creo que por ahí preguntaron how many times do you check your email. Creo que era, ¿no? Ajá, ¿cuántas veces revisas tu correo? Ah, ok, nice. Very good. All right, nice. So, excellent. Good job. Good questions then. So, thank you very much for that. And we have the last uh, people here, last pair that would be, let me see, Glenda and Carla Maria. Okay, teacher. All right. Hello, Hello Glenda. Okay, teacher. Hello, Carla. Hmm? Where do you work, Glenda? Mm, I work in the South. In San Salvador, um, at an education institute, institution in the account department. Excellent, Glenda. I work in a school in Santa Ana. Oh, wow. yes. Oh, yes. At what? 
What type do you start working? Start working. I start at work. I start work at seven o'clock. Mm, and you, seven. and you, Glenda. Uh, at seven o'clock, también. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Glenda. What do you do in the morning in your work at work? Mm, I I check the account. Um, I ran, I I drank up payments, checking for race. Um, I know. I drank drank up payments, checking for race. Mm. Okay. Yes, yes. And you? I teach my students. I work with them in his notebook and do the workbook exercise. And that's all. Uh, Glenda, uh, what do you eat at lunch? Uh, you, sh you surely, no, you sure, you surely chicken, you surely chicken, rice and salads, 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 and you? I usually eat salad and I like the fish. Oh, yes. What time do you um, leave from work? Um, you, I am leaving at six o'clock. Okay. Thank you, Glenda. Um, thank you. All right. Bye. Very good. Excellent. Bye. <laughs> nice questions. There you go. So, just a couple of things, right? Institution, institution. In, in their notebooks, in their notebooks, porque son de, de ellos, ¿no? Sus cuadernos, in their notebooks. What school do you work in, eh, Carla Maria, in Santa Ana? What's the name of the school? Colegio Amigo de Israel de Santa Ana. Oh, nice. Interesting. All right. That's near... Y carretera carretera Metapan. Metapan, yes. Ah, yeah. exactly. You see, remember. <laughs> yes. Nice, very good, excellent. Okay, then. so nice. Tomorrow, uh, boys and girls, we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, much, many. We're also going to have a, just a little review on WH questions, uh, just for us to have a clear idea on that. So let's see, I won't take more from your time. So I just take attendance and let you go. So let's see, by the way, hoy le tocaría quedarse, uh, let me see, according to the list. Um, let's see, Angel. Angel se puede quedar unos minutitos eh, después de la clase. Yes. Angel. Creo que tiene problemas ahí en la conexión. Si no, tal vez se puede quedar. Let me see. Y Iris. No sé si tiene tiempito, Iris. Unos minutitos. Yes. 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 Nice. Ok. Good then. So, pasamos lista y los dejo ir. So, we have Alison Gabriela, Alison Gabriela Ramos, not here. So, we continue with Ana Beatriz Pineda, not here, I guess. So, we continue with Ángel Balmore Aguilar. Well, he's here, but he's having problems with the connection. 
So we have Brenda Raquel Reyes, not here. Glenda Maricela Cuellar. Present teacher. Thank you very much, Glenda. E Iris Beatriz Cornejo. Present teacher. Thank you very much. E next, Josue Vladimir Alvarenga. Present teacher. Thank you very much. Then we have Carla Maria Beatriz Arana. Present teacher. Thank you very much. Next, Carla Yesenia Lanza. Present. Thank you very much. Next, we have Lucy Natalie Juarez. Here. Thank you very much, Lucy. Next, Marilyn Del Carmen Solis. Present. Thank you very much, Marilyn. Uh, then we have Mauricio Emilio Alvarenga. Present teacher. Thank you very much. Next, Obed Alexander Alas. Here. Thank you very much, Obed. Uh, next, Orfa Lisette Barrera. Here, teacher. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we have Rosa Vilma Landa Verde. Present, teacher. Thank you very much, uh, Rosa Vilma. Next, Sonia Evelyn Iraeta, que pidió permiso el día de hoy. So, we continue with Teresa Guadalupe Bonilla. Thank you very much. Next person, uh, Jessica Melissa Oya. Present teacher. Thank you very much, Melly. And last but not least, Julissa Raquel Cruz. Present teacher. Thank you very much, Julie. Okay, guys. So, as always, a pleasure for me to be here for you. Thank you very much for being part of the class. And I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good night. Take care. And I'll see you Thank tomorrow. You. Bye. Bye, teacher. Bye bye. Take care. Bye-bye. 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 Bye. Okay. Bye, guys. Just give me a second. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Okay, guys. Así, rapidito, solo nos queda un, por ahí un par de minutitos. Y bueno, primero que nada, preguntarle, ¿no? ¿Cómo ha sentido las clases? ¿Cómo ha sentido el regreso? Eh, ¿Le ha costado como acordarse de algunas cosas o vamos bien? Eh, fíjese que sí, me, me acuerdo de las cosas que, que vemos. Lo único Ajá. que siempre lo mío, la pronunciación, es una cosa Ajá. que es mi talón, es mi talón de Aquiles. Ajá. Entonces, el cómo tratar de perder el miedo. Yo uh -huh. intento, mire, ese, este, digo, hoy me voy a proponer aprenderme dos verbos, uh -huh. eh, tales, eh, presente, pasado, lo que sea. Yo me lo aprendo, pero uh -huh. después a mí se me olvida. Ajá. <risa> uh -huh. uh -huh. Entonces, ¿qué técnica puedo utilizar para poder practicar y que no se me olvide? Uh -huh. Una cosa es el interés, ¿verdad? Sí, por ahí, por ahí vamos bien, que, que, que lo intenta hacer, ahí vamos bien. <ríe> Now, uh -huh. eh, ¿qué es lo que podemos hacer en este caso, eh, Iris? Prácticamente, eh, yo diría que llevar un control, ¿no? Llevar como un diario de ese vocabulario que usted está aprendiendo. Y eh, algo que hice yo fue comprar un cuadernito, por ejemplo, solo para vocabulario, ¿verdad? solo para las palabras que decía, estas me voy a aprender, o, o el, palabras nuevas que iba encontrando, ahí las iba anotando, y es como un diario, pero solo de vocabulario. ¿Y qué hago, qué gano con esto? Al anotar la palabra, primero, como a mí el, 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 personalmente me servía un poco más, porque al escribirlo se me, se me grababa un poco, no me acordaba que la había escrito, y anotaba cómo pronunciarla, porque eso también se olvida. Puedo escribir la palabra eh, address, por ejemplo, pero la escribí y se me fue la onda. Al rato que vengo a ver el cuadernito donde tengo mi vocabulario, sé que es, pero no me acuerdo cómo se pronunciaba. Y ya digo address, ¿verdad? en vez de address. Entonces, ¿qué hago ahí? Anoto en mis propias palabras cómo pronunciar 
eh, ese, esa nueva palabra que, que, me, que me voy aprendiendo. Y eso me puede servir. Hoy en día tenemos la ventaja de que con Google, por ejemplo, pongo una palabra, eh, la pongo ahí en Google y la escucho, eh, me da la, la opción de, de poderle escuchar la pronunciación. Entonces, más o menos, eh, puedo anotar cómo es que se pronuncia la palabra. Y eso podría funcionarle. Y cada vez, o sea, de, de, de tanto en tanto, voy y regreso y estudio todo, empiezo a ver mi colección de palabras, ¿no? Y me, me gustaba, de hecho, eh, de agarrar ese cuaderno e irme a todas esas palabras que, que iba anotando para, como a modo de, 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 de repasarlas, ¿no? Y pues prácticamente sí se me, se me iban quedando. Eh, puede ser que le funcione, ¿verdad? Este, así que podría ser una técnica, como llevar una bitácora de ese nuevo vocabulario que, que vaya aprendiendo. Uh -huh. Nice. Y con la pronunciación, sí, yo sé que, o sea, en general, ya a la hora de estar como en la clase, eh, de leer algo o de querer opinar o decirlo y, y digamos, tratar de hacerlo con la mejor pronunciación posible, da como cosita, ¿no? O sea, de decir, a saber si la voy a decir bien o, o si la voy a regar. Pero de eso se trata también, ¿no? De, de que podamos eh, ir venciendo el miedo poco a poco y recibir el feedback en la clase, ¿no? Es decir, eh, si pronuncié mal la palabra, que me corrijan Y si es posible, anoto en la palabra y cómo, cómo era entonces la, la pronunciación. Y podría ser, ¿no? Pero sí, siempre no dejar de participar y no dejar de aprovechar la oportunidad que tengo de... de de practicarlo, ¿no? Que es lo que, bueno, al final me sirve también en la clase, ¿no? Es este espacio de la clase. Son sí. cositas que podemos hacer. Ajá. Uh -huh. Ok. Bueno, vamos a empezar a llevar ese libro. Excelente. <ríe> Va a ir llevando el récord ahí. Ahí me, ahí me cuenta más adelante cuántas palabras ha acumulado. <ríe> Ay, le... Chivísimo, Aires. Ok, bueno, ya no le quito eh, más de su, de su tiempo, Aire, ya sé que ya, ya nos pasamos por ahí un par de minutos, pero bueno, gracias por quedarse este ratito extra y pues adelante, ¿no? Siga ahí, eh, adelante con, con, bueno, con esto del inglés. Ahí vamos. Ok, nice, Aire. Have a good night. Have a good night. Ok, thank you. Bye bye. Bye.